Hey guys, coming to you with a little bit more content from the uh, Content Minds here on YouTube. Was really surprised to see some actual news drop from uh, Davos today. Was even more surprised to see it not really get picked up at all. But, so I thought I'd talk about it for a second. Typically Davos, in my opinion, is uh, non-billionaires talking about billionaires, non-foreign policy people talking about foreign policy. This year in particular, it seemed like there was a lot of focus on uh, non-AI experts talking about AI, which was, was a little bit uh, cringeworthy. Uh, but I was surprised to see actually someone interesting uh, who, who showed up there was a Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Blinken was being interviewed by uh, CNBC, he was talking about, at the end of this interview, the Hamas-Israel war. And he said a couple of really interesting things about Israel and sort of normalization in the region. I'll play a couple of clips uh, here to kind of show you what he was talking about. The first he mentions specifically Saudi Arabia being interested in uh, sort of what he seems to describe as as really unprecedented normalization uh, with the state of Israel. You're in a place right now where, again, Arab countries, including countries like Saudi Arabia, are prepared to do things in their relationship with Israel they were never prepared to do before. Um, that opens up an entirely different future, a much more secure future. So given some of the previous uh, content I've made for this channel, you can, you can see why I was interested in this comment as really I think he's, he's holding out here uh, with, with presumably inside knowledge, holding out hope for that Israel-Saudi uh, Arabia normalization uh, that a lot of us have been looking for and, and that a lot of us think the, the Hamas attack was actually designed to, to sort of sabotage. The second piece of information here is sort of e equally important, I think, and also kind of veers into territory where I've seen very little analysis. So, Andy, first of all, there's an incredibly powerful equation for Israel's future for its security, uh, and it's this, and it's different than anything we've had in the past. Unlike any time in the past, virtually all of its neighbors, uh, its Arab neighbors, its Muslim neighbors, are prepared, indeed want to integrate Israel into the region, and they're prepared to give it the kind of security assurances and commitments and guarantees that they never would have given in the past. But they're equally committed to uh, a pathway to a Palestinian state, because they believe strongly, right. and we believe as well, that until that question is resolved, uh, you're never really right. going to have peace and stability. And for that matter, Israel's never going to know true security. So, And you can see here, uh, Blinken actually refers specifically, after referring to Saudi Arabia specifically earlier, uh, he then makes mention uh, of sort of explicit security guarantees uh, that would be afforded to Israel by partners in the region. And he sort of predicates this security guarantee on uh, a, a viable Palestinian state, uh, a resolution to the current conflict in a way that, that limits uh, Palestinian civilian deaths, you know, um, all the things you would expect him to advocate for. But I thought it was really fascinating that he's actually specifically uh, noting here uh, both Saudi Arabia presumably still being interested or not having put this normalization off the table, and also uh, by specifically using the term security guarantees, that obviously brings a new level of bilateralism or multilateralism into, into this discussion, right? Really, it, it sounds like in an inside in an insider view, the level of coordination and, and bilateral agreement uh, that might be on the table uh, between Israel and Saudi Arabia in particular might be higher uh, than some originally thought. And, and really then Blinken goes on to note that none of that can, can happen if Israel continues to sort of uh, callously bludgeon their way through resolving this issue, right? They have to figure out um, what their in-state looks like. They have to do it in as uh, maximally humane way as possible and they have to do it as quickly as possible. Um, you know, obviously he's supportive, I think generally of Israel defending its, whatever you want to call it, right to exist or, or kind of preserving its sovereignty, or, or I think he multiple times refers to, you know, making sure these kinds of attacks uh, can't happen again. He's obviously not going to say that, that the uh, state of Israel doesn't have the right to do that, but he's also very keenly pushing here that in particular with Saudi Arabia, this normalization, uh, that that's still very much on the table and that it could, uh, extend as far as some kind of security guarantee, uh, perhaps between Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States. Obviously, the configuration of that would be would be beyond our ability to guess at this point. But the Saudi Arabia's interest here is to uh, gain the United States as a as a guarantor of its security. And perhaps as a as a part of that uh, as a part of that plan, what they've discussed would be uh, some kind of similar high level collaboration uh, between the Saudis and the Israelis. Just wanted to throw that out there and, and see what y'all's thoughts are. Really curious in the comments. Do you guys think this is still on the table? Do you think uh, Israel-Saudi uh, normalization is still possible? Uh, definitely let me know below. And thanks again for watching.